Hi, I'm Molly. And I'm Jamie, and this is our From the Pasture with Hired Hand podcast. As the owners of Hired Hand website software, we've been developing websites and creating internet marketing strategies for livestock breeders for the past 10 years. The majority of our customers are involved in the breeding of registered animals, such as Texas longhorn, Highland cattle, horses, and white-tailed deer, where the pedigrees are very important. The From the Pasture with Hired Hand podcast examines many of the differences in raising pedigreed livestock for maximum profit. Join us and learn what we're covering today. Today I'm joined with Dan and Sam Stoltz. They're a father-son combo with Might As Well Ranch, and we're going to get to know a little bit more about them, what makes their breeding program special, and about their new Hired Hand powered website. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for having us. Yep, thanks. Why don't you start by telling everyone a little bit about yourself? So we got our first Longhorns in 2008. Uh, we've kind of had the herd turn over a time or two between now and then. Don't have much left of that those original cattle. And uh, near St. Louis, Missouri, just raising Longhorns. And Sam, how old were you when you started helping and being around them and everything? So I was seven whenever we got the Longhorns and they actually got a Longhorn for me and my brother. They were both unregistered Longhorns and uh, we started off with them and they were, my parents started off with the purchase of them and they were each a hundred dollars at the time. So uh, we kind of had them, we bred them to our grandpa's bull and had Angus calves the first round and uh, just kind of saved the money from there and built their own herd from there. Nice. So Dan, what made you decide to buy Longhorns back then? Um, if you guys had Angus, um, what, what appealed to you about the Longhorns? Uh, we just wanted something different than the, than the regular beef cattle. Uh, just like the idea of not having to look at the ear tag number to, to tell them apart. And we liked the you know, the majestic look, I guess, of the Longhorn, the kind of the Old West feel. So Sam, do you still have that? Do you and your brother still have those first ones? Did you have an emotional um, tie to them? So my brother um, is more into cars than he is into Longhorns, but he got to keep his around and cash the check every time they had a calf every year. So he kept his, and I got into registered Longhorns and um, felt like I needed to um, focus on that. So I suckered my mom into purchasing the cow from me since she had more of an emotional attach than me. <laughs> and then, uh, so those two passed away um, a few years ago and my brother still has one unregistered uh, heifer that was from that cow. But other than that, I currently don't have anything attached to the original ones. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about when you decided to get started with the registered Longhorn specifically. Who did you buy some of your first ones from? How did you find them? Uh, why did you buy the ones that you did? Kind of walk us through that part of um, your history. Okay. So yeah, we, we started with those couple unregistered ones and then didn't really know anybody else in the area. We started going to a few of the of the registered sales. The first registered one we bought was from Tommy Peterson. And, uh, you know, we've, we've stayed in touch with, with Tommy and with, you know, some of the other somewhat local breeders got to meet a few of those. So what made you like, what did you look at when you bought the, those first few? Why did they appeal to you? So the, the one from Tommy was just flashy brindle and a big traditional twist. So at that point, we didn't really know a huge amount about the pedigrees. We knew a little bit. We just liked the look. Um, and then we bought some also from a, a gentleman named Floyd Weiss, who has since passed away, but he was in central Missouri. And we, we bought several of our first registered ones from him. Uh, just getting started and then like I said we've we've kind of turned a lot of that over as you go you you find things that you like better and 
move out some of the older breeding. So how did you find Tommy and the other gentlemen when you started looking? Um, were you using the internet? Was it just by word of mouth locally? The, those were both through the, the BNC sale that they have in Missouri. So we met both of them there and, and started the contact that way. And then, you know, as time went on, we, we started searching websites and, and reaching out a little bit farther. So now that you have had them for a while, what's your favorite part? I like going to futurities and competing and uh, obviously playing in the Calcuttas, which is a, a good and a bad thing at the same time. <laughs> uh, and that's my favorite part. Um, I also like raising our heifers up and putting them through the show circuit futurity and then uh, seeing them turn into producing uh, good maternal cows. And, and my answer would be when, when things are going well, they're relaxing. Go out and check them in the pasture and uh, it's a nice break, but that's as long as fences aren't down and uh, nothing else is wrong. Right. And, and then I guess the other thing I would add to that is, you know, making friends in the industry and, and meeting people at the, at the events. So Sam, you touched on it a little bit with, you know, raising your heifers and watching them grow into cows, but um, tell us a little bit more about some of the goals that you all have for your breeding program, maybe cover the next five years or so of where you want to be. So I um, kind of was always into pedigrees big. I am on hired hand sites all the time looking at pedigrees. I'm on horns, uh, searching back pedigrees all the time. And I always cared about pedigrees, but I never was as dialed in as I am now on maternal lines. Um, Jimmy Jones preaches on it a lot about maternal consistency. And um, so now over the years, I've gotten my herd down to a really tight group of, um, of maternal lines. They all share the same, or um, they're all back to the catch it bull. And they're all daughters, granddaughters are close to that breeding. So I like keeping things close. So when I find something that clicks, it is all common and consistency is key because longhorns are so inconsistent. Um, if you can get something that's consistent, that's whenever you can become successful. And do you, do you help him with that at all, Dan, or is that kind of just his, his thing there? No, I mean, he, he researches a lot more than I do and, and spends a lot more time checking all of that out. But yeah, we have the same, sort of the same thing. We, we've acquired cattle over the years for a lot of different reasons. And just because you like the looks of one and our herd's a little more scattered out than what Sam's put together. Uh, but it, it's basically all just getting to the point where we can have animals where we can be proud of everything that we've got and hopefully have some sale prices reflect that. So Sam, tell us a little bit about maybe your favorite one or two that you have on the futurity circuit for this year. Tell us about their breeding and, and what, you're, what you're excited about them. So uh, me and my dad partnered on a cow named Horseshoe J NBC and uh, came from Jimmy Jones. And she's a cowboy catch it checks daughter out of a cow that I personally is one of my favorites of Jimmy's line. Um, she was a Dickinson bred cow field test, which um, is the grandma to Horseshoe Jam Porton, um, which is also the mother of Journey, which is Jimmy Jones's really corkscrew concealed weapon daughter. Um, so we AI'd her to 50-50 heifer sex last year, and we have a 50-50 calf that um, is gonna get weaned here soon. So we plan on taking her to a few shows. Um, me and my dad just got new jobs. Um, so I don't know how much we'll travel this year as much as we did last year, but um, we look forward to showing her at a few shows this year. Do you have her named yet? Yeah, her name is N.W. Nesesky. Perfect. Is Love what you're hearing? Be sure to check out our pickup truck confessions. 
It's a video series where we hop in the truck or a rental car and interview a variety of breeders about what drives their passion for their livestock, how they got started in the breed of their choice, marketing tips, and more. And now back to the podcast. Is there anyone special that either of you kind of want to recognize for helping you get started that you haven't already talked about? I, um, I met Jimmy Jones probably, uh, four or five years ago and, um, he's helped me tremendously. Um, just tell me how he thinks about breeding things, uh, going over his herd and, and just giving me so much information. And I, uh, I've personally never seen a more consistent herd while viewing people's cattle than Jimmy's. And it impresses me so much on how he can promote his cattle to such a degree that everything is, is that high class. So I definitely look up to him and his program. And we, we talk with Joe Salacek quite a bit as well. We've gotten a couple of bulls and some cows, both from Joe. Um, you know, I said, I, I mentioned earlier, Tommy Peterson, we, we talked to him regularly and gotten some cattle from him as well. Um, Scott Simmons bounce, bounce things off of him and talk to him regularly. So just, just trying to keep information flowing back with, with quite a few different people. Perfect. Well, before we switch gears and talk a little bit more about your website specifically, is there anything else that you want to add about your herd? Um, I, I think that should be good other than I think, I think we have everything really dialed in now. Um, we, we have everything, we're proud of everything that we have on our website. And we have a new bull that we are really proud of named PCC Goliath. He is still in his 23rd month and is over 72 inches. And he's going on some cows here soon before he's getting shipped out to Utah to our partners, Jason Harvey. So in the, in the future, it'll be exciting with Goliath calves hitting the ground. Um, also, we've, we've only sold three public, public auction cows bred to Goliath, which are averaging $11,000. So we're really proud of that number. And, um, before his calves are even hitting the ground. That's awesome. Do you have anything you'd like to add, Dan? No, I think I think Sam covered it pretty well there. The 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 bull is the newest excitement, I guess. And 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 we got him through um Joe Slawcheck, but he was bred from Tall Grass Cattle Company. So you brought up the um, folks can view him on your website. So let's talk a little bit about that. So what made you choose Hired Hand to convert your website to? Well, it's it's simply the best website option out there. I am spending time on Hired Hand sites an insane amount. I think every browser history on my phone is on a Hired Hand site of some sort. The thing that I uh, find it really valuable in is if I'm looking at an animal and I'm not on the person's website that owns it, if I want to find further information, there's a quick link to, to straight to their website where I would never be able to find their website, may never have, may never have meeting the people ever. And, um, and I, I catch myself going through their other animals that have nothing to do with the reason I was even looking at their website. So if you have something for sale or something that catches my eye, I'm, I might have never seen it if you didn't have a higher hand site. So um, I feel like it is a very valuable key to, to own and use a higher hand website. And the, just the database that you have on the pedigrees, that how easy it is to, to research and go back and look at progeny, you know, the ability to, to see the sale catalogs and, and the ads, uh, just, just makes it a lot simpler than independent run sites that are not connected. So now this question wasn't on the list, but you guys can't get mad at me for asking this. So this one's for Sam. Um, so Sam, how did you finally convince your dad to get a hired hand <laughs> site? <laughs> well, um, after calling him cheap for many years, um, <laughs> 
Uh, Tommy Peterson, which has never had a website to my knowledge, called me around Christmas time saying that he finally pulled the trigger on a website and uh, that you guys were running a deal. So I instantly called my dad and said that we better look into it. So I guess the I guess Tommy made him feel like if Tommy had to have a website, we had to have a website as well. And uh, and and before uh, my dad was was always just using the website that we had before. But as much as I use hired hand websites and the progeny and how we have really productive cows, I want to be able to um, show off those productive cows and show their progeny on a tab and have it easier for the person looking at the, our cows. So Dan, is that pretty accurate or do we need to let you tell your side of it? Other than the part of him calling me cheap, I prefer the <laughs> word thrifty. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's just been uh, getting our herd to the point where I thought it was justifiable, I guess, is part of it that, you know, if, you, if you're selling low-end cows, it's hard to, hard to justify it, but I think we were getting to the point where we needed to, to have that better exposure. Well, tell us a little bit about some of the decisions you made or the considerations you made when developing your site with us in terms of pages and, and categories and how it's set up and everything. So, I mean, we had, we had a site before, so we kept some of those features, like we've got the beef page because we do sell some, some beef uh you know we we kind of wanted a certain look which we researched a lot of other sites and and looked at other people's websites for ideas um i mean the the layout of the animals itself and the pedigrees is all pretty straightforward it was it was mainly just picking what tabs we wanted to have and and the look have you, um, Sam, have you changed anything up since it launched um, that you decided you liked different or better or anything with the categories or how the animals are displayed? Um, I think we changed it to alphabetical order. Um, so the cows are in there like that. I updated some pictures and moved, moved a few things around to the sale page and things like that. But for the look, it is pretty much this, the way that we got it. And we, we still need to add a lot of things, but Sam went and got a real job in the meantime and hasn't had as much time to play with it. So uh, we still need to get a lot of progeny on there and fill in a few blanks. So what are some ways that you're trying to stand out in the breed with your website? I, uh, I thought it was a good look and a good layout with the gold feature um, and just showing that our animals are um, are really really nice and and I felt like that it just made our website look complete and professional the same way that I think our cows portray it. And from my standpoint, I mean Sam does quite a bit on social media. We do a little bit. I think it's going to be nice to have those social media posts with a with a link straight to our site or a link straight to the hired hand live site that can show. You know, here's the here's the lot number. If you want to start pre-bidding, here she is. Um, just that that flexibility to put those links in there and then let everybody easily do their research. Okay. Is there anything else you want to share with the listeners about your website specifically? Um, all the cows are in there together. Um, there's not like a separate tab for my herd and my dad's herd there. They're all in together, but I would just say to check out our our cows and and what we have, and we have some really good, really good bred stuff in our sale pen that um that have nothing wrong with them and is just really good cows. Um, my dad travels a lot, and I don't like putting out hay in the winter, so we're moving <laughs> some to get down on numbers a little bit. He, he says that as he's going to pick one up this weekend. So don't, <laughs> don't buy that whole story. That's funny. Uh, but yeah, that's, I don't know that I have anything else to add to that. All right. Well, the question we always end with, um, which you guys can each answer on your own is, uh, what is your favorite hired hand website that's not your own? I am really impressed with 
uh, Helms website. I think it's laid out really good. I think it looks really professional. And I've always thought that their photos of their cattle were always really um, standout-ish. And I thought it looked really, really nice. And I'm not sure if I have a good answer for that. We, we look at quite a few of them. Uh, we obviously wind up on Arrowhead a fair amount also, just, just checking things out. It, you know, it's an easy place to search things. Uh, but that would, that would be the one I would mention, I guess. So do you two have any stories you want to share about um, the interesting workings of a father-son uh, combo on the ranch, or is that for another episode? <laughs> I, I'm always still trying to beg for, uh, I need consulting fees, but <laughs> I always get hit with the, I don't get wet, wet when it rains and I eat when I'm hungry. So for now, I, uh, I don't have any comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no paid ranch manager position is available is what I'm telling you. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you both uh, joining us today and uh, we'll link up all of the, the websites that you mentioned in our show notes. We'll try to link out to the folks that helped you get started. Um, and yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll see you at an event coming up soon, I'm sure. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah.